Hi. Can you hear us? Oh, boy. Okay. Hey, everybody. So I am here with Danelle Reva, the very one and only famous. You may uh, know him from, where can they know you from? Where have they seen you before? Um, I did do that one thing. Um, what was that one thing? What was it called? Um, oh, the Olympics. Ah, the USA Olympics. That's where I know you <laughs> from. Okay, and you were in uh, Rio? In 2012 in London and in 2016 in Rio. And you won? In London, I won a bronze in the all around, and in Rio, I won two silvers, one on parallel bars and one on high bar. And I won a ticket in front of the TV watching this young man <laughs> bring home the medals to the United States. So uh, why are we talking to Danelle today? And we're talking to Danelle because he is actually in this next episode, episode five, Adios con la hermana, uh, where he's a guest star and he plays a dance instructor. Yeah, that's so funny. That's so funny. That was my first project ever. And then I actually went on to be on a dance track. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Yeah, so Danelle, funny story. Actually, while we were filming, well, it was his first project where he flew from Los Angeles uh, over to Miami. You were here for about, let's back up. Let's back up. I didn't know Danelle a year and a half ago. And when we were starting to cast everything for Hialeah, um, we needed a we needed to fill the role of a keen sis choreographer and i didn't know who was going to play this role and then my sister uh some of you may know her roxy vargas on nbc she was interviewing Danelle, and she calls me and i was about to jump in the shower she goes hey you know Danelle leva from the u.s men's team i'm like yeah she goes i just finished interviewing him and it looks like he's trying to get into acting i go no kidding and she said yeah she goes well if you ever need him you know let me know and i said Okay, cool. Just went right over my head, right? And so I'm taking a shower. I'm like, oh, my God. And so I got I got his number. I called him, told him about Hialeah, and he was on, uh, well, he was on a flight. He came over to Hialeah for 24 hours to film what you're going to see yeah. in the next episode at 7 o'clock. Yeah, so pretty soon, right? Pretty soon. Yeah, really it's soon. right now. What time is it? 3.33 LA time, yes, because we are talking to you from Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles, California. Uh, okay, how many people? We got We got five whole people on this. Hello, five people in our audience. And if you're just joining us, we're here with Mr. Danell Leva, uh, extraordinaire. You may have also seen him after after the u.s olympics uh he was actually a finalist on made i can buy did i can buy that on yeah. uh Univision. not that one it was univision right yeah Univision. it was yeah. on univision so how did that whole thing come about uh thank you melissa melissa says that i was fantastic i think she's just melissa you're just biased because we're friends um but it was really fun man that show was really really fun um i learned so many different genres of dance i learned just so many different things about the industry as well um i even shot a short film while on the show it was really great it was really fun it was like an action short and i obviously did my own stuff and i jumped from a uh from some helicopter no <laughs> I didn't, we, we didn't have that budget building uh, I did jump from like the side of a building basically onto like uh, a truck. Was the truck moving? No, it wasn't. Oh. I mean, again, no, well, it's okay. Know. Hollywood. Maybe they fixed it in post <laughs> and maybe the truck was moving in post. Okay. So, actually, what was funny when we actually did our premiere last year uh, yeah. at, at Mylander, uh, yeah. you know, some of you, some of you folks who have been watching the episodes, now, let's move a little close in case they can't hear us. Let's see. In case they can't hear us. Uh, good. Oh my God, where are all those likes coming from? I see a whole bunch of thumbs. Okay. Uh, when we were actually premiering at Mylander last year, uh, Danelle did not come, much to my disappointment. I was texting him, we we're about to we we're about to screen the whole thing to a crowd of a thousand people, and he was actually in the middle of shooting the finals yeah. for Mira Kim Baila. 
Yeah. Uh, and he was like, oh, I'm about to show up. I'm about to show up. And he was stuck at Univision and he just couldn't come. So he actually hasn't seen the episodes and he actually hasn't seen the episode that he's in. Actually, when we're done with this live, he's going to see it for the first time. He's going to watch it with you guys for the very first time. So uh, yeah, and it's going to be really fun because it was really fun shooting it. So yeah, hopefully it looks as cool as it was. He's got a personal invitation to watch it with the director. This is like a VIP uh, thing that's going on. I'm sorry that you guys can't be here to watch it uh, with me. I was actually just finishing the episode before I came out here to see him. So it's like really, really, really like brand fresh, it's like brand. right off the grill. It's still hot. <laughs> it's still hot. Um, so Melissa was asking what made you Oh, Want thank you. Get into well, Melissa, what a great question, because I actually have that question on my phone. So, Danelle, <laughs> gymnast, you spent uh -huh. your entire life doing this, right? Yeah. You decided to retire a few years ago. You announced yeah. your retirement. Why acting? What made you want to get into acting? So, um, the reason why I want to be an actor um, and just like in entertainment period is because I mean, as a kid, it was this thing of like, you were so like impressed and so in awe of all of these beautiful, amazing movies and like all of these like cool, like superheroes or like just like these things happening. Um, but then like, as I got older, I started to realize what it was. That was like the actual allure of it, what it was that I actually wanted to do. And what it comes down to it is just storytelling, you know? And there's no more pure, more amazing way of storytelling to me than acting you know and i feel like that's what that's what it really it's all about you know like telling a specific story in a way that only you can tell you know and like the cool thing that's the other cool thing about acting you know like two people can be playing the same role and it happens there's a lot of people that in plays there's always different people playing the same role in different plays and everyone brings something specific and i just think that that's incredible well to a certain extent when you had to perform mm -hmm. on the gymnasium on the floor, you know, doing some sort of routine. You were telling a story, weren't you? That yeah. isn't that also a form of acting? Yeah, I mean it absolutely is a form of, of entertainment. I mean it's literally called artistic gymnastics. So um and that was obviously the other the other side of it, you know, that I love performing. And right after the Olympics here we had this uh it was a tour and it was a where we were like dancing and doing gymnastics and just like interacting with the crowd and stuff. And like, I had never felt anything that incredible, like just being able to perform. Yeah. Um, and I just needed to chase that. And it was really great because when I came out here, I started doing improv as well. And just being on stage with improv was just something completely different. And it was just like getting those laughs and like hitting was just amazing. So I was wanting to become an actor. Was there ever a moment? when you were doing your floor routine that you just wanted to stop, get a microphone and do a monologue in front of everybody? Um, would, the, would the judges uh, judge you with tens on that? or Not so just... much with the monologue, but there, I was always doing like some payasa, if, if you will, yeah, yeah. you know? And I was always like just being a clown and just like being silly and, and coming up with anything off the top of my head. And it just like I said, making people laugh and just like make people like react to a performance is, the best year. Uh, I was actually in Rio for the Olympics, um, and I snuck into uh, the gymnastics competition once. And I, I wish I would have caught this moment. Unfortunately, I didn't. I got to see Simone Biles uh, perform, but I didn't get to see him perform. Little did I know we were going to eventually cross paths anyway. But there's a moment, and you got to YouTube it, where he is oh. about to get on the balance beam. And he starts to do like a chip parallel bars. Parallel bars. Uh, the, the what? Parallel bars. Parallel bars. And he starts to do a Chip and Dale's type of uh, full Monty type of performance. Where how does that guy just sound like? So uh, the thing about that, you had the crowd going, man. Thank you. Thank you. That was acting. The thing, <laughs> the thing about that was that there are a lot of competitions where they do that. What they yeah. they'll have a gala after the competition is over with, and you go in and you just like perform. You just like have fun. Now, did I know that it was going to be televised? Did I know that it was going to be <laughs> shown all over the world and not only in that very specific stadium? No. People no, have phones, it. man. It didn't need to be televised. Yeah. People, everybody was filming you take your shirt off in front of the world. That's very true. And, yeah. But I mean, I wasn't the only person who did. Like another guy went in and he like. Yeah, but you were the only. But you were the only Cuban there, bro. That's true. So you were well, represent. 
representing the U.S. Well, there were other Cubans. You were the only Cuban American. Yes. Which brings us to now Hialeah. So exactly. you have some sort of tie to the city, right? You weren't oh, born. Course. You weren't born in the. You weren't born in in the states. You were born in Cuba, in right? Cuba, yeah, in Cabo de la Danza. And when we moved to Miami, we lived in Hialeah for a bit, um, and then we lived. I moved around a lot. Kendall, um, Eureka Lakes, um, almost Homestead, Cutler Bay. Um, we moved around a lot, but. I mean, growing up, my entire family lived in Hialeah, so I was there all the time. And you saw people that live in Hialeah or no? Yeah, probably. Yeah? yeah. What's your fondest memory of Hialeah? Um, going to my grandparents' house, because who doesn't love going to their grandparents' house? <laughs> you know oh, I mean? wait, wait. Uh, you, you, isn't, I think you, you did something, you said something that your favorite food, I guess, that your grandmother would make is arroz blanco con huevo frito. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. very true. Yeah, I mean... It, so simple, right? But uh, we all know white that. white rice with a fried egg, right. and it's got to be sunny side up. Yeah, it has yolk, to be like a little sunny side up, you know, so that you can break it and then mix it, and then the rice is do yellow. You put, do you put you put the in it? No. Okay, my wife but doesn't I, do that either. I do it. But, I mean, no. Do you put beans in it? No. Yeah, no, no. My mom does that. It's gross. I don't like that. <laughs> Mrs. Leva, if you're watching, I hope you don't condemn your son. Don't okay, don't so don't I do it white rice. Sorry, sorry. White rice, fried egg, picadillo. I mean, I love picadillo, so it would be awesome anyway. Maduro. Yeah. Cut that up, and uh, uh, and uh, avocado with tostones. That's a lot. That's a whole it's, lot it's, of mush. It, it doesn't look good. It doesn't That's look pretty. A whole it lot does of mush. It does not look pretty, but it is heavenly. You will. Okay. I mean, if that would to be my last meal. I could die a happy man, that's for sure. <laughs> but yeah, my wife just does it, uh, white rice, fried egg, and ketchup. That's weird. That's very strange. That's the American and the Cuban-American. Yeah, uh, she's ketchup Italian. Ketchup and eggs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you do ketchup and eggs? I used to, but uh, 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 it's not for everybody, but some people like it. Right, we're down to three viewers now, so oh, obviously we're losing an audience here. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about, and does anybody, by the way, please feel free to ask any questions to Danelle while we're here. Um, I've got my own questions, but now we're going to talk a little bit about Hialeah. So, um, Danelle, uh, explain this role that we're going to see you in now uh, in episode five. Um, so I feel that this guy, I, I don't remember, is he engaged to... Man, just talk about the... Just talk about the... Well, he, he has a partner and she's a lot but he's also a lot so that's probably why that works um but i feel like he's still he has a lot of nostalgia and he likes reminiscing a lot about about Marty because i feel like he thought that they had a really great relationship which probably they did because he's not he's probably not the best guy but well if there's something that we we've learned about Madi up to this point in episode four is that yeah there was your character but it seems like there were many others before you or possibly even after you mm -hmm. uh so you're just the first one that we meet and as Kay is going through this whole thing he starts to find out about all the skeletons that Madi is hiding in her closet uh and this is a big can of worms going into episode five where you're going to start to see a skeleton literally just fall out of the closet uh, and it really so put, it puts in, it puts both of them in a really, really strange place. Um, so talk about the experience of, of shooting it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I called you, you came out, you came out to Los Angeles, we met really, there, and yeah. you just you just jumped into it, really. Yeah, it was really fun. It was really great. You know, again, we were we were at a dance studio, and everybody was so amazing. They were so welcoming and so ready to work. Um, especially Melissa, thank you so much. Um, and the funniest thing about it was the fact that while we were filming our director, um, he would randomly give us notes here and there, or I would go up and be like, hey, like, how's this going? Like, do you need this? Do you need that? You need Where's that? he going with this? He's like, no, no, you know, we're okay. But then all of a sudden we started realizing that our director was like this. And he's just over there with his hands on his head and just like, just, just not happy. He's very not happy. Wasn't right? having it. 
And I was really worried because I was like, man, I must be doing real bad. My performance <laughs> must be so bad. So then what do I do? I go up and I'm like, hey, do you need me to do anything different? Do you need me to you know, switch something up? And he's just like, no, no, everything's fine. Everything's fine. And then I realized after we're doing one shoot, um, we're doing a scene, and our director is holding the camera, and all of a sudden he goes, take the camera, take the camera, take the camera, take the camera. And then he runs outside and just is throwing up his life boy. So uh, I want to first say thank you to the Kale family, Pedro and Vicky uh, and Amy Kale, I'm sorry, who actually own and run Vicky Bakery, the largest, pretty much the largest bakery franchise in Miami. Shameless plug. Uh, it was actually it's there. Yeah, it is because I mean, nine whole viewers are are, are watching. Well, ten. Thank you. Hello, ten viewer. You oh. just want a free car. Da da da. Uh, so so this took a lot of. Yes, they're gone. <laughs> so this took a lot of coordination. Talking with the Ko family, uh, their daughter Diana was was getting was doing her actual quinces practice. So it took a lot of coordinating. This was actually a quinces practice that we were filming, right? Uh, between getting Danelle to Miami, between actually going in there. I mean, this was weeks of preparation. So then we go in there and we're doing the rehearsals and all of a sudden uh, we're getting ready to shoot and I just feel, that didn't feel right. And uh, I just say action and I run to the bathroom and I just, I mean, it was like a scene from The Exorcist. It was just awful. Just my soul was coming out of me. I come back, uh, everybody thought it was the food, so they start throwing away all the sandwiches that we had bought. Now, apparently, I didn't. I had ro uh, rotavirus, which I didn't know uh, what rotavirus was till I actually had rotavirus, so uh, don't have rotavirus. This is a paid message by David Vargas. It's not good for you. And that entire night, I was actually throwing up consistently between takes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, th there's actually a video that we'll post on the high on, on Facebook eventually where you see uh, sometimes I wasn't even getting through the takes. I was actually letting go of the camera because I wasn't able to hold it. I'm just running that back door was my best friend in the gym. Uh, it was a terrible, terrible night yeah. for me. Uh, and I felt so bad for this man because he thought I was pissed at him and yeah. he thought that he was performing uh, poorly. Yeah. But actually the entire cast and the other and the entire crew rather uh, they all stepped up their game because even though I was, you know, 30% there and I was just doing my best to hold on to the camera and hold, hold everything in, uh, everybody just did what they were doing best. You know, by that point it was, I think we were on day five or day six. So everybody was getting the rhythm of the shoot and the dynamic. Um, and then you messed it up. <laughs> and, and, then, uh, and then a demon came upon me. <laughs> <laughs> a green demon, a bad green demon. Even Jordan, who was staying with me throughout the entire production, we still had two days left of shooting, and uh, he actually had to drive me home, and he stopped at a pharmacy first to pick a vitamin C because nobody wow. knew what the hell was going on with me, oh, <laughs> and he thought he wasn't going to be able to finish. Uh, so, yeah, that was a, a terrible, terrible night. Um, but anyway, we got, the, we got it done. We got it done, and you're about to see it at uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, the the premiere for this uh, next episode, episode five, minutes. Adios con la hermana. Yeah, eleven minutes is going to be at now. So uh, basically, guys, uh, you know, if you have any comments, this this live is going to be posted on our on our web on our actual Facebook page now. I mean, feel free to ask questions, and even if you don't catch Danelle now, I can always text him and ask him any any questions <laughs> that you may have of him. So, Danelle, what, what other projects are you working on now? Um, I have a few things. I, I shot a short not too long ago. Uh, I feel like they're finishing it up um, finally. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I also shot a separate short last weekend. That was really fun because I spent the whole day at the beach. So, I mean, it's the best job I've oh, ever had. <laughs> okay. Um, You're not too far from Miami then. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of the same. Yeah. Um, although I did have to drive two hours to San Diego. Okay. But it was a beautiful beach. I didn't, okay, well, no, no complaints. Um, and two yeah. hours in Miami gets you to Okeechobee. Yeah. Exactly. You went to San Diego. That's not so bad. Mm -hmm. Um, and some other things that I've teased on my Twitter. So 
So what, what's the end goal for you, Danelle? Because you have this, you know, you had this incredible career as a gymnast. Now you're transitioning into acting. Where do you see yourself? Ideally, it, it, yeah. Where do you see yourself in the next few years? I mean, ideally, I see myself, you know, constantly working and on TV or Netflix or movies or all of the above. Um, uh, I'm also kind of working a little bit on music, but yeah, you play you play any instruments? What do you mean? Um, not so much. I kind of write a little bit. Okay. So, but you guys have to wait for that. You won't have to wait too long, but you do have to wait for it. So when people but when people see you as an actor, what kind of actor do you want them to see? Um, I mean, obviously, <clears throat> the people that I would love to have a career similar to are people like, you know, Will Smith. Okay. Um, because, and and uh, Donald Glover. Okay. Also, Childish Gambino, yeah. because like he really has done so many different things. Um, I think Dwayne Johnson is a really good example because he's somebody who came from, you know, being an athlete, and then be, he's like literally the one of the most paid, if not the most. I think he's the highest paid. paid. He's the highest the paid. Highest paid actor. Right? Actor in Hollywood, yeah. Amazing. Um, and plus, I just love that he's creating so many things himself, his team, and I. That's how, what I love to do. You know, I love to create things and like, you know, again, like I said, storytelling. Well, something that you were just telling me about now is that you opened up a gym with your mom? Yeah. Yeah, we also did that in, in Miami. Miami. Yeah, in Miami. It's um, uh, basically on 120th and 137. It's kind of by the hammocks. Um, it's called Labor Gymnastics Academy, and it's, it's for girls of all ages, uh, and they are competitive. They've competed internationally and everything already, uh, a whole bunch of different competitions, and they're doing really well. Stop by. Please, it's great. We would love to have you. Uh, can people find you there? Can people see you? you're living in Los Angeles? So who's running the gym over there? Are my people... mom and okay. my my family. It's a it's a family. You'll the, feel it. The people who there. were single handedly responsible for getting you to the Olympic yep, team. Basically, right? yeah. Okay, so that's that's promising, right? You don't have to look on Yelp for that. Like um, Yelp would say, you come here, you go to the Olympics. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. why not? Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it's really great. Um, um, there is adult classes as well, so I mean, literally any age can go. I might consider it. Yeah, I might. You know, I've been looking for something new to do, mm -hmm. and gymnastics might be one of them. You know, it's gonna be tough. Ninety-five percent chance I'll break my neck, but hey, if you're gonna go out, there's still a five percent. Go chance. out big, right? Seventy-five. Yeah. There's a five percent. You'll be fine. Yeah, you know, I've always been a man of odds. Good odds. Good odds, but that that may not work to my advantage. <laughs> anyway, uh, let this video yeah, be in our. Seven minutes. Yeah, seven minutes. Well, we don't have to go all the way. I just wanted uh, people. No, I'm just saying. I'm excited. I want to, to see the end. I wanted people to get a chance to to come in. I, I wish we had uh, more engagement and people were asking you questions. We've had uh, pretty good lives in the past. But anyway, like I said, this live will be on our page. Uh, we've, we've gotten good traffic on all of them. So if you guys have any questions, we've tagged Danelle in virtually all of the videos uh, leading up to leading up to this. So. You know, you could either post on this actual live feed or, you know, either I or he will get back. But, uh, yeah, you're looking at a, a star in the making here, guys. One who started his career as a, as an acrobat. Uh, more acro than bat. What is the origin of that word? Acrobat. It has nothing to do I with bats. Know. It has nothing to do with bats. I don't. That's a very interesting you question. Should, uh, we're going to look that up. We're going to look it up. Put that on the... On the what do they call? It? Put that on the feed or the server. Yeah, so, we'll look it up. Yeah. Anyway, Google. Uh, okay, look, my stupidity is getting us up to twelve uh, viewers. <laughs> I should keep should talking talk nonsense. Yeah, exactly. Um, so anyway, guys, like our uh, like our episode, share our episode. You guys are saying great things about us. Uh, we get this show to the next level simply by your engagement. Okay, uh, we've put our entire hearts and souls into this. Uh, the more you like, the more you comment, the more you share with your loved ones, friends, with your entire network, the more likely it is we get the show to the next level. We can start making it on a, on a bigger stage, which is here the end goal for us and the entire Hylia team. So don't support just me. Support this man who's, who's, who's changing lives each and every day and who has inspired <laughs> so many Americans with all of his uh, achievements. I wish you brought your medal. I would have I I liked know. to have worn it. I know. Sorry. Uh, it's okay. Next time. 
next time we do this, next time we do this, you'll bring the medal. Uh, this episode is called Adios con la Hermana. Those who have uh, danced in a quince's choreography would probably know what Adios con la, uh, Adios con la Hermana is. It is a, uh, a, 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 a turn, a salsa move that you do in a choreographed dance, but there is also a double meaning here. Uh, Adios con la Hermana translates to goodbye to the sister. So I will leave it at that. Okay, you guys connect the dots there as to what happens in this next episode. Tune in for next week. Okay, next week I'll be doing the same exact thing uh, with all 10 of you with Jordan Wall, Kay Greenberg himself. Uh, we're going we're gonna to be doing this whole thing. Oh, my God, we have 41 comments. Why didn't they show up? Oh, look at all of this. Look at this. Hey, Danelle, yeah, look, look, look at Roxy. Roxy said hi. Me too. I wasn't scrolling. Oh, my God. Sorry. Look. Okay, you know what? We're going to get to questions Let's here this with now. four minutes. That's good. Okay. You should be, you a, should guest. be a guest. On. Thank oh you. My. That would be so – that's my dream. I wasn't scrolling. This is. I'm a, I'm a technical moron. Okay. Tokyo, what about Tokyo, Danelle? Giraffes don't do gymnastics. <laughs> I'm not talking about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, about, what about Tokyo? You're going <laughs> to – that's it's a beautiful cool. city, I'll tell you that. Yeah, okay. Well, apparently he's he's retired for good. This is Olga Vargas. That's my oh. mom. Yeah. Uh, Liz. There. Who? This, Liz. She oh. said this episode is one of my... I, it is one of my favorites, too, mainly because uh, I wasn't uh, shooting the other ones. So this is really the only one that I can say this is my favorite to be a part of. Um, but, you know. Giraffes don't do gymnastics. That's just me and Javier. I know that's you. That's just me. Nah. Anthony George has joined... Uh, where would you like to see Giancarlo's in season two? Wait, um, me? Yeah, that's you. That's ideally back on the show. I mean, that's a good answer. <laughs> We've got three minutes left that we haven't gotten to any of these. Um, okay. Where would you, uh, Donna? Do you dance? Dan yeah. Yeah. Do you dance salsa? Yeah. 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 I mean, I learned well, how to dance salsa. You just wait. You'll so. see. Not in the show. I don't. Okay. Stakes were high that night. Yes, they yeah, were, they Melissa. Were. Poor David. Yes, poor Davidito. We had a blast. Yes, we did. Hi, guys. Hello. Oh, hi, Liz. Oh, this, no, is, this, is so like, sorry. this is like speed questioning now. And no ketchup. Oh, Melissa doesn't like ketchup. Watch episode five. See? Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. Quiet. Try what I suggested. Danelle, how did you research your character for Hialeah's series? Um, how did I research my character? I'd say so you read I the did script. Say, yeah. I did. I read the script. Uh maybe a few days before actually flying out to Miami and then I listened to him that's that was wow. I was just all I was he, like so what do I do and he was like let's do this <laughs> right also that yeah yeah he, uh, he listened to me between uh, uh, vomit yeah. uh, I felt bad for the street sweeper the next day uh, <laughs> I love that Roxy said bro that's, that's the most Miami thing I've got yeah. in this hey well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost got you in the face. Okay, two minutes left till the premiere of episode five. Uh, Dave Crossgrove uh, wants to know. Thank you for bringing up. Thank you for bringing us these episodes. So entertaining, Dave. You are welcome, my man. Okay. Also, they really are. Who else? Uh, also, what is your guilty dish? Oh, we talked about that, Roxy. But but oh, okay. okay. What's your guilty, guilty dish? The guilty Hurry, one. Three fifty nine. Always custard. Or agua con leche. Flan is uh, custard. Flan. It's such a flan. I prefer flan. Arroz con leche. Arroz con leche is another. Uh, my 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 very American roommate uh -huh. uh, in college made arroz con leche by getting white rice and pouring milk in it. Put a little bit of sugar, and uh, yeah, I almost threw up that day too. <sighs> Anything else? Okay, look, guys, uh, keep commenting here. Sorry, it's uh, it's it's showtime for episode five. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Wait, there's that's, one more? There's two more. Two more comments. Two more comments? Okay. They were say Cubano, no? <laughs> yeah, no, far from it, my friend. Okay. Okay, guys. Showtime. Enjoy. Enjoy the episode. Let us know what you think. Like, share, follow. Thank you so much. We love you. Last episode is next week. Uh, I'll tease the title of it. It's called Chichon. I'll see you here next week with Jordan Wall, who plays Kay Greenberg. Thank you, everybody. Love you. Enjoy.